Hi, I'm Alan and this is Kaz. And this week we're back looking for adventure and having fun in the mountains. We're packing up the van and taking you back to one of the most beautiful parts of Europe, the Dolomites. Let's go. Stay safe, Jules. So it's now 10 o'clock in the morning, back up to top of Paso. I call it Farolgasa, but it's not called that. It sounds like that though. And now we're doing a little ferrata before moving on to pastures new in the Dolomites. And now we've got the mid-morning sun to contend with because we were planning to do it at 7 a.m. before it got hot, but now it's getting hot. So we will contend with it. We will prevail. Because to coin a new phrase, you never never regret a hike. <laughs> That's our new phrase, cuz. Yeah. To quote Phil and Keeley on chapter by chapter, if you don't, the sooner we start, the sooner we'll finish. <laughs> I like that thing. <laughs> so we're gonna crack on. So the hike starts at the very top of Paso Falsarrego, and we park there near behind the restaurant Strobel or next to the restaurant Strobel and then just hike up. It's a really easy hike this, really easy for Etta to do because it's not much of a hike to start up with. It's not, you're not, not you're not walking, Retta. you're not walking up sort of four or five K for three or four hours. And obviously we want to be heading towards Fretta degli Alpini. That's what we want to be going for. And that obviously will take us up to the Fretta and eventually call the boys. It's, uh, it's pretty easy to access, so it's a good one to tick off. So once you come past the marker, you, uh, you walk along this little balcony thing for a bit. Uh, views to the right of the ski outs, and I think that's, uh, is that Nouveau? Cuz? The other side of Paso Gao? Is that it? I think it might be. So we've just spotted some people on the wall, on that wall behind us. That peak, that double peak thing. Halfway up that, GoPro won't pick it up, but halfway up that we spotted some uh, climbers and we're hoping that's not the Ferrata. Hey, look at this. Old World War One bunkers. Or World War Two. I'm not sure if it's World War One or Two, but Dolomites is full of these bunkers that are an old buildings from from the war where the soldiers were. These ones are pretty cool. Hello. <laughs> so as you come from the ruins there, come down this track, and then we're going to there. And that's the, we think that's the start of the Ferrata. And so where we're going guys, up there. See the cables glistening in the sun. Here we go. How's the trouser situation today? Uh, it's <laughs> A bit tweet yesterday, weren't they? So, well done. That was making my calves ache. It was making my calves ache. Hey, hey, hey guys, this is our new, a new favourite hobby. <laughs> <laughs> what? You need a poo? Yeah. Where? 
<laughs> this looks interesting. Oh. <laughs> it's a uh, proper vertical drop that is. We're going round. See, first section comes up pretty much from the floor and crests just there. And then you come over there, round this bit, across this walking bit here. And then we start to ascend this bit, which goes diagonally and heads towards the top. It's pretty easy. I think we've only had two, maybe three sections where you're overhanging, even here, where it's pretty much vertical. It's okay, there's plenty of ledges, plenty of footholds. So it's good. How you doing, Kaz? <laughs> How you doing with the climb? Oh. Yeah, it? It's not bad, is it? Yeah. It's a nice little climb, isn't it? Yeah. Challenging enough, isn't it? Yeah. It's, pleasant. Oh, yeah. it's not easy. It's long. There's a little bit of upper body strength needed, isn't there? Yeah, there is. But there. not loads. Good. It's very long. It's a big forata. Plus, yeah, massive views of marmalada in the distance. Lovely. And then I suppose if you want to go, you can go up to Refugio, up, up there, up there, let's go. Ready for that flapjack, here. Yeah, ready for coffee. Coffee and a flapjack. Yesterday, we went up there, that's Alvaro Peak and the Fretta up the left hand side. And we also went up Nouveau Refuge and had a spot of coffee in Alvaro Refuge just there. And you can walk from Palzago where Jules is. Here you can walk all the way there, all the way along there to Alvaro. It's only about three, three and a half kilometers. It's actually a pretty easy walk. So if you want to do Alvaro, it's easy, probably easier this way than Paso Gal like we did. And you can do this Fretta we're on and Alvaro in one day. So yeah, nice. Now this bit here is a bit technical. You've just got to spread yourself a little bit wider, spread your feet. It's okay, it's not hard, but it's not straight up. You've got to so I'll go from side to side, spreading your legs quite wide. Oh, all good. Don't wear toy trousers. <laughs> Don't wear toy trousers for this bit. You ready for that coffee? Oh god, yeah. <laughs> I'm ready for coffee and flatjack. <laughs> oh. Certainly am. So I now should have stayed in the German car here and working on my upper body. <laughs> My arms are feel like I've got lead weight. So much to be said for it, isn't it? So much, I'm glad I went in the gym for a few months. Oh. I really are. How's the uh, toilet situation? Hanging in there. Only just. You pardon the. You pardon, pardon the pun. The pun. <laughs> <laughs> On a one to ten, where are we at? Uh, well, probably an eight. An eight. Oh, that's not. That's. Be careful with them stretches. <laughs> you can see the exit. When you get to the top from here, you can see the exit. So it goes along that ridge, down there, zigzag down, past the ruins, to the car park. Well, you could carry on to the refugio, I suppose, and then come back to there if you fancy a nice day out and I bet the views are epic, even more epic up there than we'll be here. But... Ah, it's World War 2K. That's impressive, isn't it? They used to dig these out in the war and then hunker down in them for the winter. Unbelievable how they say most people died in the Dolomites fight in Dolomites side of the war from exposure from being here for the winter than actually dying in the combat. Crazy. Let's not hang around this bunker because there's a awful lot of <laughs> It's sheep here, you clown. <laughs> Sheep who you cloud. It is. Raw, raw. Oh, I can go to bed then. I don't think this is the top. Yeah, not quite the top. Otherwise, go down that way. We're going to start going down, aren't we? Don't want to go that way. There's no end of caves and stuff in the walls. Can you see them all? Tons of them everywhere. Go to boys. Yay! We made it! 
<laughs> Here we are, called a bus. 360 panoramic views. It's beautiful. It? <laughs> it's stunning. And best of all, you get marmalada in the distance. There's a lot of ruins up here. There's two ways down. Well, it's probably more ways down, but you can either take this route down, I showed you earlier, or you can go around that way. Let's go and look at it in a minute. And you can go up to Refugio and come back down. Take the cable car even. It's got quite a few ways. It's stunning off here. It's World War One or Two. Bunkers everywhere. I think I said before, really would hunker down here for the winter and they say more people died from trying to survive the winters than they did from the actual combat up in the Dolomites. It's a ferocious war going on up here. Beautiful. There's even remnants of it up here. I think that's what this cross is about at the top with the barbed wire. I think that's a sort of memorial to it. Stunning. Call the bus, guys, we did it. Boom. I'm hungry, Kaz. I'm hungry too. We need some food. I not to take a pack up to the top. No, I, we, had, we had a trusty, trusty flapjack at the top. <laughs> Good old flapjack. I thought that was a bit sweaty, Betty. I need some food. <laughs> amazing picture for Instagram and she felt better of it. <laughs> Still the top and had a wobble. <laughs> oh jokes. <laughs> oh. Yay! Hey. hoops on toast. Nice. <laughs> Thank you.